Before we go on to what you'd like to talk about today, you'll have probably seen our report um, that uh, my colleague has been doing this morning about shared ownership and wanting more transparency with the service charges. What would Labour do, even when you're in power? Well, we do want to see that additional transparency. This is an issue that I've come across myself in my own area, actually, where service charges have increased very substantially, very little explanation of that being provided to people about why the changes have occurred. And we've been calling on government to be ensuring that greater transparency here. Of course, other measures that we've called for in relation to leaseholders as well. And unfortunately, we've not seen uh, Michael Gove taking forward uh, those measures in this area that are necessary. Yeah, and, and you are promising to protect family finances um, following a spike in repossession claims. Yeah, that's right. We've seen, unfortunately, that the number of repossessions went up by over a quarter, 26% in the aftermath of the Liz Truss mini-budget. Now, of course, that's a statistic, but for every single family caught in that situation, having to move out of the home that they thought was going to be theirs. This is a huge tragedy. So we have set out those plans today to make sure we could never see a rerun of what we saw under Liz Truss and the Conservatives, the fiscal lock that we've set out, also the plans to be delivering those additional genuinely affordable and social homes that people so desperately need. And what about those um, coming to this country that would like to make this their home illegally, says the government. Um, the Rwanda bill could well get royal uh, assent by Thursday. What's Labour's view? Well, this is a completely unworkable and extortionately expensive approach from the government. It's a pure gimmick because even if on the government's own figures they manage to get some people in the air and eventually on to Rwanda, it's actually going to be as expensive as transporting every single one of those people to France and putting them up in the Paris Ritz for four years. This isn't a serious plan to get a grip on these matters. Labour has set out a serious plan, for example, to have the kind of joint police cell that we need to smash the criminal people smuggling gangs to get the backlog down as well of people who need to have their claims processed. We've got 100,000 of them. That would be ending hotel use that, of course, Rishi Sunak promised but hasn't delivered on. As I said, we need a proper plan here. All we've had from the Conservatives are gimmicks and a very, very expensive one in the Rwanda scheme at that. Yeah, but it does look as though, it, nevertheless, it, it will uh, pass eventually through the House of Commons and receive royal assent. Um, the government, if they were sat there this morning, would say, OK, Rwanda has not gone quite as planned, but there are many other countries that are lining up, given that Rwanda has been the trailblazer, and we will be sending people there as well. But this is a scheme that would cover by the government's own reckoning around 300 people potentially. That's a drop in the ocean compared to the huge backlog that the Conservatives have allowed to develop. Even just for example, over the Easter period, we saw more people actually coming in. The government is not dealing with this issue seriously. They need to have a proper plan. That's what Labour set out. Instead, as I said from the Conservatives, all we've had is a gimmick and an incredibly expensive one at that. What's Labour's view on potentially using the RAF to take people to Rwanda? Well, actually, we already have a scheme and a system in many different areas for ensuring that there is overseas processing of people's claims. That's been the case, for example, with the Afghan schemes. That's already built in. The difference with the UK government's approach here is they know that the Rwanda scheme is incredibly expensive. You know, regardless of the method of transportation, they've been providing very large sums of money to the Rwandan government. You know, we heard today, I think, that there was going to be additional major payments, millions of pounds going to Rwandan 50 government. £50 million. Pounds. Now, that is a huge amount, overall adding up to half a billion that the UK government has committed to give to the Rwandan scheme. That is simply not a good use of money here when we need to make sure we've got that proper robust system, as I said, to smash the criminal gangs, to get the backlog down and also deal with the reasons why people are trying to make these very dangerous crossings in the first yeah, place. Yeah, my question is whether Labour would, would object to the RAF being used to take people to Rwanda. Um, I mean, I, I we'd need to look into any such suggestions, of course, from the UK government. But the method, not. well, the method of transport isn't really the issue well, here. It is, to be that's honest what I'm asking you. you. So, well, uh, what I'm asking you is, what do you think about the optics of the RAF taking people to Rwanda? 
Well, I think that our armed forces do an incredible job. I think it's important that job is focused on where they're needed. And we've seen them, in fact, acting very bravely and question. courageously in many different... Well, but it is my a response to your is, question because that it's means... It's not. You're, talking, you're going to UK talk to me government... about Israel and I'm going to come on to that. I'm asking you about, what, about the optics of the RAF taking people down to Rwanda and whether Labour would object to that. Well, we need to make sure whenever our armed forces are used, that that's done sensibly in line Would with their overall mandate. Well, we think the whole scheme isn't sensible. Would it be the sensible, given that it becomes sensible. law, that the RAF would be called upon to take people to Rwanda? Well, look, we've been really clear. We don't want this scheme to well, proceed be clear to me now. in any incarnation. Well, it's going to. It's going to, because it's going to become law on Thursday and there will be some fighting about it in the courts, but the, the government is absolutely determined, probably their election depends on it, getting people, at least some of them, footfalling in Rwanda. My question is, how would Labour feel about the RAF facilitating that? Well, we don't think there should be any facilitation of this scheme by anyone because it's not going to work. It's extortionately expensive and rather than a gimmick like the Rwanda scheme, we need a proper plan and that's what Labour set out. That applies whoever is involved in delivering it. This is not a serious response from government to the issues that we're talking about. Um, what is an acceptable retaliation by Israel after what happened at the weekend? Well, we think it's really important that there's de-escalation now of the very worrying set of circumstances that we've seen developed. Obviously, this matter was discussed in the House of Commons yesterday and Keir Starmer really urged Rishi Sunak to use every opportunity to try and ensure that there is a de-escalation, that we don't see further conflict. Yeah, but is there any acceptable retaliation by Israel? Well, as we far as Labour is concerned? Yeah, we, we, we don't want to see a situation where we're seeing a conflagration, where we're seeing additional conflict. Here, ultimately, Israel did repel those appalling drone attacks that came from Iran. Of course, our UK armed forces were engaged in that as well. We think it's really important now that there are cool heads that prevail, that we don't see a further escalation, because, frankly, for the people of that region who are in so much fear at the moment of further escalation, of further insecurity and violence, we need to make sure the international community is thinking above all about them and urging restraint and de-escalation. And you're confident that Netanyahu makes sound decisions? Well, where we have seen, unfortunately, Benjamin Netanyahu taking the wrong position, we've been very clear about that as Labour. We think it was wrong that he rejected the two-state solution, for example. We've also been very clear that the kind of settler violence that we've seen on the West Bank is completely unacceptable. And Labour has also said, again, in distinction to the UK Conservative government, that, for example, it's right the ICJ is investigating the conflict as the International Court of Justice. So where there has been behaviour that's not acceptable, Labour's been very clear. And retaliation would be wrong? Well, we believe there needs to be de-escalation rather than oh, some yes. kind of repeated tip for tap. We don't think that's in the interests of anyone in the region. We've overrun, as usual. It's good to see you. Thanks very much indeed.